I'm here with former DUI enforcement officer Michael Scafidi, who's now one of the top DUI defense lawyers here in San Diego County. And Mike, I, I know that you've had a lot of success defending clients who have gotten uh, DUIs here in San Diego County. L let me ask you, first of all, in terms of penalties, if somebody does suffer a DUI conviction uh, in San Diego County, w what are they looking at in, in terms of penalties? Well, generally, there's going to be four consequences in San Diego County for suffering a DUI conviction. Mm -hmm. First is you're going to be on informal probation for up to five years. Second, you're going to pay a fine of about $2,100. Third, you're going to get two days in county jail, and depending on the enhancements, up to around 30 days in county jail. And the fourth consequence is you're going to have to do a first-time offender drinking driving program. DUI school. DUI school. And you said two to 30 days jail. I mean, I guess that would depend on the BAC, whether there was an accident, if the person was speeding really fast. That's correct. Um, it could be as low as two days, but with aggravating factors, typically you can see it up to 30 days on a first-time DUI. Now, if somebody gets a second offense DUI conviction here in San Diego County, what are they looking at then? Again, there's going to be those same four consequences, except there's going to be a minimum of 96 hours straight time in jail up to about 60 days, depending on the aggravating factors. Mm -hmm. In addition, the drinking driving program, instead of a first offender program, it'll be a second offender program. And because of that, it'll be an 18 month drinking driving school. So, so the DUI school, instead of being three months, is gonna be 18 months. That's correct. And the fine, for, instead of a $2,100 fine for a first offense, it's a $2,500 fine. Now, if somebody gets uh, has a misfortune of having a third time DUI, uh, here in San Diego County, the penalties are, are, are much, much worse, right? They, they are. There's the consequence number one is that five years probation. There's going to be a minimum of 120 days in county jail up to what with aggravating factors, 365 days in county jail. So so at least four months jail up to a full year. That's correct. The fine is going to increase to $2,600 and the court will consider having you put on an interlock device for your vehicle for up to three years. So uh, let me ask you this, Mike. You've had a lot of success uh, defending clients who are charged with DUI. We, we've had great success. And, and, and what are some of the things that you do to, to help clients win cases? We subpoena the officers to DMV hearing. We cross-examine them. We subpoena the videos that are in the most police units now. The, we, the, the videos that sort of depict the, uh, the the roadside DUI investigation. From from the observations a minute prior to the stop being made mm -hmm. to the roadside contact mm -hmm. to sometimes the field sobriety test. Mm -hmm. We're also going to we also subpoena any calibration and maintenance records for breath machines evidentiary breath test machines, and blood documents, blood run sheets if there's a blood test. And, and a lot of times the, the breath tests and the blood analysis, there's mistakes that are made that can really undermine the prosecution's case. A absolutely. Th those, the collection of that evidence and the testing of that evidence is controlled by California Code of Regulations Title 17. And many times, in many cases that we defend, we see that the labs have made mistakes or the actual initial collection by the officers have been done in error. So as, as horrible as these uh, penalties are that you describe, if you have a good DUI defense lawyer, it may well be possible to, to get the charges reduced or dismissed and, and save your driver's license. I would agree with that 100%. No case that the DA has and brings forth is completely 100% foolproof for them. There's always things that come up to defend the case, to mitigate a case, and a lot of cases to get cases dismissed. Even if you blow well above the .08, the, the situation is rarely hopeless. Rarely. In fact, I think some of our greatest successes don't lie with the great results we get on the, the low blood alcohols, the 08s, the 10s, the .12s. I think some of our greatest results have really occurred with elevation blood alcohol levels two times the legal limit, three times the legal limit, because then we have all these tools to resources about the technical issues, and we get the cops at DMV. There's no DA there to protect them. We basically have them on their oath for hours at a time to break down their testimony. And, and, and finally, Mike, I want to ask you about uh, if a client does have a DUI case, about contacting you, because they may be unsure whether they want to get a lawyer, use a public defender, just plead guilty. Uh, if they want to come sit down with you, uh, have you go over their case, give an assessment of, of what can be done. Do you do that for free? Is, is that a service that you offer? We, we do. We do free consultations for people. And you know what, Neil? I made a pledge 
that I have kept since the day I became a lawyer 15 years ago. And that pledge was that I will give a free hour of my time to anybody who's facing prosecution in our criminal justice system. It's something that I decided to do as a lawyer and as a human being. Because I have seen too many times in my lifetime, in the 32 years I've been in the justice system, people pleading guilty to charges that they're not guilty of. So it would behoove someone before they go in and plead guilty and get this on the record and suffer all those consequences, at a minimum to come sit down with you for an hour, go over their case and talk about what you can do for them. Absolutely. I gar- you know, there's not a lot of things in life I guarantee, but I guarantee when they leave that meeting, they'll know more about their case and more about their rights than they did when they walked into that meeting. And, and, and you know, of course, you know, people are struggling. A lot of people are struggling here financially. A lot of people are out of work. Uh, and some people are sort of intimidated, think they cannot afford a lawyer. Um, do you have like payment plans and, and, and special arrangements that you make to fit people's budgets? We do. Um, how we set our, our scale of, of charging people for DUI cases is I look at what's fair to the client and what's fair to us. I have a really good idea when I do an initial intake how much work is going to go into a case. I know exactly from talking to the client what is going to be involved, what subpoenas are going to be done, what testimony is going to be drawn out. So I have a really good idea. So I understand what's a fair price for the lawyering, and I look for a fair price for the client. And what we do is we do allow them to make payments. So even if they think, gosh, I can't afford you know, $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 for a lawyer right now, they should still come talk to you because you'll work with them. Well, not only work with them, plus they're going to get that free hour consultation, mm-hmm. and they're going to leave that meeting with so much more information than if they hadn't taken that meeting.